Hello, this is Suzanne in Ohio. have something to share with you. Um, a project that I've been working on and I wanted to show you these before they were all totally finished. I have a couple that are finished and they're all at different stages and because everybody always wants to know how they're put together I thought it'd be great to show you these as they are right now at the all, all different stages. So they're fabric journal covers and here's a basic how they look soft cover open them up and then a fold in flap now this one does not have a lining yet this is one of the ones I wanted to use to show you how um, how I put them together now as you can see this is kind of a country um, farmhouse theme and I'll just talk with you through my process about how this one came together and maybe that will help you in some way. So what I start out with is a piece of muslin just like that at the right size whatever size you want and then I put you can see right here a layer of that very thin thin Pellon interfacing for garment sewing. Now I use that because it doesn't um, it doesn't go off grain or off square very easy and helps to hold everything so it doesn't get skewed while you're handling it and doing all your stitching. I love that in there. Now if I wanted the fabric um, journal cover to be a little bit more rigid I could use a heavier weight but on these I used a very thin weight and so what will happen next is this will get a lining and then it will get another piece of lace or fabric all the way across the bottom as a pocket and then where it naturally folds right in this crease line right here I'll do a hand embroidery stitch to hold it in place and then I'll do one over here to hold that in place. So eventually again it'll have a lining and a pocket. Then it'll be folded in this way, folded over that way, and then whatever the closure is will go all the way around it. Now for this particular design I'll just comment on it quickly in case you're interested. My foundation for this one was um, some old embroidered handkerchiefs. They matched a card table a uh, tablecloth that that I had and so this blanket stitch was already on these napkins and I pieced two or three of them together and that was my foundation. Then I started laying snippets down and in this case my jump off point was these pieces right here which are very old early 1900s and they are pieces of an unfinished Dresden quilt. I was able to get a whole bag of them at the relief sale, um, the Mennonite relief sale down in Kidron, Ohio. And so I have a pretty good selection of them. And here's another portion of them. I did not cut these apart. These were the pieces that had not yet gone together as a complete circle. And um, the way the lady made these, I just left it the way they were. They're not perfect and they still have the original basting stitches right in them. So I left it right there. Now these Dresden plate pieces were very strong colors so I had to choose some very strong colored snippets to kind of carry it all off and pull it together. Now it's by no means finished as far as stitching is concerned but I will not be adding any more uh, pieces of fabric or anything. So here is just a snippet of uh, curtain lace which I dyed uh, with my ink tense pencils and just all kind of different snippets that create a country look and kind of pull it all together. This little piece of eyelet has I made it as a pocket and I had that little scrap of that rooster and here's a piece that's not yet stitched down this little chicken wire piece so I'll be stitching all the way around it and probably put a word on it because I have some words that are printed on fabric and I'll per perhaps stitch that on there and then 
Um, you can't have anything country without having some kind of pillow ticking of some kind. And then this is a print of a, a fake French toit. And again, those Dresden plate pieces and just snippets. And here you can plainly see um, my foundation is this original napkin that had the embroideries on the corner of it. Uh, this trim right there, um, genuine tatting off of a vintage doily or dresser scarf or whatever the case might have been. I'm not sure. So that's kind of how they go together. All right, so <clears throat> let me show you a couple other ones that are in the process and then I don't, I'm so crowded here, I don't even know where to put anything. Now, I made some of these all in different styles. I wanted a variety and I had some beautiful fabrics I was going to use. This one is still in the creating style, or stage, excuse me. So what I did was I had a print. This is a vintage print printed on fabric um, that you run right, or it's an iron on you iron it on your fabric after you run it through your printer so I created this little collage uh, vignette right here with snippets and, and lace and things and then I mounted it I intend to mount it see it's not sewn down yet there it is I intend to mount it right there on the front then I have this old piece of embroidery and there's some more of that tatting and I thought the colors go well, so it's going to be on there. Probably I'll just leave these raggy edges, but around this or somewhere it's going to get some more um, light colors to kind of set it off fluffy. I'm not sure. So that's my process. I'm never sure until um, when it's done, it's done. This journal cover is made out of one big piece a beautiful English rose print and then when you turn it over you can see this is my muslin and I'll show you again here is <coughs> excuse me here's my polyester interfacing right there very thin layer of it and nothing is stitched together yet because I've not done any hand embroidery <coughs> sorry on this as of yet what that does is pull everything together and keep it in place so what would I do with this with since it's all solid back here I have some cranberry colored um, lace I could add that on here and there on this or I could take my curtain lace and stain some of the flowers to match and or leave them white and just overlay for interest or I can leave it plain so whatever you'd want to do and I don't know for sure where this one will go or how elaborate it will get but this is it in the very first thinking stage okay so here's another one this one is kind of um, shabby chic country or uh, Victorian French I don't know and this one is a hodgepodge of um, real light rose prints, curtain lace, and all kind of things like that. You can see it's self-explanatory. On this one, I did use a large panel off of a curtain. I stained it with my Intense pencils uh, in the, for the flowers and the leaves. And then when to attach it to this surface, I just running stitch used embroidery thread thread in a brighter darker color to enhance the shape of the flowers and the leaves. Now the whole thing is put together and held together with this running embroidery stitch. All of these meandering stitches I've done by hand in all this swirly pattern and that serves to keep it together. So on the inside, the lining on this one, another piece of roses, only larger <coughs> and not to scale, which I like the surprise of that. 
So I lay the lining fabric down, and in this case I used a piece of eyelet, the edge trim, the edge of the eyelet as the pocket. Then right where the fold is, I, I have this marked. You can see it's black. I did that with an, uh, is it called Frixion pen? It will disappear as soon as I iron over it with a warm iron. So I put that line on there and just running stitch that so that that encourages it to fold right where you want it. And then same thing with this. Here's the Frixion pen line and I have stitched that so that it will fold where I want it to. Now I have sized these for regular, um, what shall I say, half a piece of paper but pretty full. Um, and you can see how much bigger it is than a half a piece of paper. That way you can use larger papers, you can use file folders, and there's room in this and I will be marking these with a pull-out thread, a thread that can be pulled out. I'll be marking the lines to sew in three signatures. So it has a lot of room to grow. It can easily end up real fat and chunky like that. And you can see how much space there would be in there for big, thick, highly embellished um, signatures. So that's the shabby chic one. Let me get another one here. I have several, so if this is not your cup of tea, you might want to just move on. I don't hate for you to, but you, sh you could. All right, here's another one just in the stages. This does have all the embroidery on it, and you can see all that green right there is from where I embroidered this tree branch on here. So this one is a whole lot of snippets of dresser scarves. All right, so <clears throat> um, some most of these dresser scarves still had their original tatted or crocheted edges on them, and so I left them. And where they didn't, I just added some more. And again, all held together by these meandering, um, either like here I actually... Uh, quilted around that, but these meandering embroidery stitches. That holds the what I call the muslin layer and the um, interface layer holds that together. Now this one, after I sew, this one will get little glass beads sewn on these branches and then that'll be it for this one. And it will get a lining and the lining will have a pocket or not, I'm not sure. Um, I wanted to make one without that flap over, so this is it. Whatever the lining is, it might have one pocket going this way, and but I don't know if I'll be able to add a flap or even want to. So that's that one, old dresser scarves. And then here's more of the same. This one is some some dresser scarves, some old linens, and then just snippets and pieces of really nice old fabrics that I had. Here's an old um, curtain in a cream beige doily uh, curtain um, dresser scarf right here. More of that same gold tatting. And then just all of these pieces, it just comes together and it makes it so interesting. And then again, to hold it together, here's all the embroidery. Different embroidery stitches, some meandering, these flowers I did, this little sprig I did, and then swirly, swirly, and away you go. And this one is finished on the inside. Um, <clears throat> this is not a feather ticking, a ticking print, it's just <coughs> a striped twill. And so I added this lace pocket and then some meandering stitches to hold um, the lining to the front. And then when I'm all done that, I go all the way around the edge with a running stitch and sometimes two or three times all the way around depending on what I feel like it needs. I want it to be raggy shaggy stringy but I, I don't 
want it to come apart and I don't want you to be able to look inside and see that polyester lining so much. Okay, so that's another one. And then these are the ones that are pretty much already done. And I'll tell you what my inspiration was for these. I had these three puffies, I call them. This little thing right here with all that lacing uh, and uh, bordering off and all that, that little vignette was, I had a set of three, and they were on my Etsy site. And I got lots of looks at them, but I didn't sell them, so I thought, I'm going to take those down off of Etsy and do something with them. So again, it's an, a vintage print printed on that transfer and ironed onto fabric. So here's your little vignette right here. Um, when I mounted it, I put some sticky out of lace and some more of that netting and all that on it. And the puffy had, um, let me think if I left that. Yeah. No, I did not. Oh, yes, I did. Okay. These puffies were made to hang. So it has that little looplet there. But on this side, I had made those puffies with pockets so you could slide a tag or a gift card in there. So I left that as a hidden pocket and you could put a tag or a note inside there. But this one is done on um, a pink base and then this was all done with curtain lace and this curtain lace had the image of a oriental looking butterfly on it. So I stained the flowers, the leaves, and the butterfly with my ink tense pencils and then I laid the whole thing down and meander stitched on the sewing machine around the edges where I wanted it and then cut the excess away. And then where I thought it was a little too gappy, I put some swirly embroidery just uh, for it to carry off the color and to hold everything in place. So that's pretty much what that one looks like. Let me show you the inside. The lining is strong, a strong color, and the pocket is out of curtain lace. So when you fold it over, you fold it over, and your brain says, oh yeah, that matches that, okay. So we have blues and greens, blue greens of all shades in there. And then here's the stitch lines to encourage it to fold where you want it to. And then, th then like that. And then I will put those, what I call, uh, just basting stitch thread in there, probably in a bright red or something, so it can easily be seen. And <coughs> that will indicate where you could sew one, two, and, <coughs> and three, um, signatures. Okay, so that's that one. Now I have one more, and this one is still a little bit at the um, come together stage, so I wanted to show you what that process is. So I'm going to take some of these things away, and you can get a clearer view. Let's see, where's that other? I'll bet something's caught on my sleeve. I don't know where it went. There was two beads. All right, so let's take these out. And this is what I started out with. Here's one of these puffies right here. And you can see it has that little loop there where it was made to hang up. And the pocket on this one is at, is at the top. So I took that puffy and I mounted it on a background, uh, this lame, copper lame. And then for a focal point, I cut a piece out of a cotton lace tablecloth and a frond, I guess you would call it, and I stained it to match the colors that I wanted here. And then that's just st stitched on. I wanted, I needed to pick up this orangey copper look somewhere, so I had a piece of yellow gauze and I stained it around the edge with, um, it was either ink tense pencils or distress ink, I'm not sure. 
And the rest of the cover is real simple. Let's see, I found one bead. Okay, it's basically laid on a white on white background, a little piece of curtain lace here, a little piece of embroidery um, chiffon, and then layered together, held together with these meandering embroidery stitches. So the inside, a real muted, nice soft beige type of print that goes with the style of the front and some more curtain lace as the pocket. And again, those stitches and the markings to tell it where to fold. All right. So when I get it at this stage, <clears throat> I might say to myself, man, that needs something else, you know. So um, I have some pieces and parts that I may or may not stitch on here. First of all, I have a huge selection of these rolled flowers that I have made and ready all different colors and I just happen to have this dark uh, blue green and a medium blue green so here's a possibility of what I could do to finish off this folder front and I could this is a nice spot right here for a little bit of additional embellishment I could do one flower or I could use this one which kind of blends doesn't really stand out and because this very dark blue green is right here and it'll probably get some more of that this color matches perfect I might put that right there if that's too big I can use that one and if I feel like it needs something else I've got the assortment of these eyelash trims this is a perfect combination of the blues. I could use some of that. I could use some of this green. It is the same earthy green as along the edge uh, in the print and along the edge of these leaves. And then here's a lighter green. All of them could work. So I could take a few pieces of this if I want to. And uh, I would shorten them. But just for the sake of showing you. I could string these down here coming out from under the leaves and let's lay these leaves back on here and then put the flower there so take this away so you can see okay so that could be the finish off point for that I could also um, I swear I had two beads laying here when I stand up, it's probably going to fall out of my clothes or I'll find it hooked to the edge of my sleeve somewhere. But I had two matching assortments of beads and I can either string them right here with a ribbon or I can hook them coming out right underneath the flower. Now let me bring it down just a little closer so you can kind of get a better look at that. It makes a beautiful little vignette however you want to put it together. So that's how my thought process goes. I'll move these out of the way <clears throat> and I'll show you here. These are a bunch of tags I've been working on but because this has a space here for a tag if you get just the right ones it'd make a beautiful um, place to slip. Well I can see now. Okay let me back out. I'm frustrated today. I don't know. I know what people say now when they've done a video two or three times. You forget what you've said or what you haven't said. But here's this here's the tag spot. You could put a gift card in there and make a shorter tag or make a more fancy tag. Whatever you want. Whatever uh, whatever it needs or whatever you want to do with it. So, I left the pocket because the puffy was already made. So there you have that one. It's going to be a beautiful um, piece when it's totally finished. All right, I'm going to set that aside. And this is my last one. It is totally done. This is kind of in a bohemian gypsy style. And I guess I have to say this is my favorite of all of them. Number one, I love lavender and green together. And number two, I love boho type things.
So I know this is very busy. It's hard to determine what it is. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you here's the pocket and these tags that I stuck in here, I'll take them out. I'll show you them in a minute. But there's your pocket. That This was the original Puffy. But I mounted all of this vignette, all these things together, all this collaged vignette, onto uh, upholstery tapestry. This is a beautiful piece with um, gold, dark brown, and olive green. And so you can see there. It has a satiny look in parts of it and a cut velvet look in other parts. Just love this fabric. <clears throat> so this little vignette is created with just a lot of layering. And it's just like you layer papers, only in this case you're layering fabric and snippets. So uh, here's a piece of tablecloth cotton, and I needed to pick up this brighter green here in this vignette, or this puppy. So I stained it around the edges with intense pencils. And then all of these things are added as needed. I needed to pick up the lavender, so I had some music paper um, sheets printed on a lavender and then a snippet of an old tablecloth, an old button, and then um, here's some edging uh, uh, nylon with embroidery, you know, machine embroidery, um, applique type stuff all the way around the edge. So I gathered it up and laid that on top of, here's a piece of my hand dyed lace, a piece, a snippet of tapestry, some gold metallic tool, and then that lays over top a little snippet of these gorgeous bohemian, oh, Romanian gypsy looking trims. I have um, about six different ones like that. They were expensive back when, in the, when I bought them, so I only have six different ones and I only have 18 inches of each one, but I wanted to use it. And so here's a little, um, some old taffeta um, ribbon, some strings, and a rolled flower with some um, lavender and purple eyelash trim woven right into it. And then you have your two hanging beads right here, both which match all the colors. So on the inside, let me put these aside. Um, the lining I chose for this was um, an English printed fake toile uh, with vignettes on it, although this is the only one that I could actually save. I had to cover this up with a pocket, but it goes nice. It goes nice with the style. And this one's completely done. So you can see I've done two rows of running stitch around the edge up the seam lines or the fold lines, and then that folds in like this. So then what I created was, assuming that this journal cover would have three signatures, I created three signature covers that all go fairly nice here. So the first one <clears throat> is like this, two pockets, and then a flip out and that is hinged on there with a piece of fabric. So there's your first signature cover, and then a second one with sewn on pockets at the bottom, kind of like a file folder, school file folder, and then here's the third one. And so these uh, journal covers will come with three signature covers, the uh, basting lines which indicate where to sew them in, and then a closure. And I haven't decided on closures for any of these yet, but um, I will before I put them up on Etsy. Now, each uh, the ones with pockets will come with one tag, and I'll just show you quick my tags. Um, I, I can't remember if I made another video with these or not, but these are a hodgepodge of die cuts, fabrics, etc. I'll just show them to you quick. I'm not going to talk about them, but they are so cute. And another project that I was doing 
to use up what was laying on my desk. So you can see how nice that would be with a pocket sticking out of the pocket, or a tag sticking out of the pocket. Okay, so if you're interested in these, you'll find um, at least this one on my Etsy site, like ASAP, and over the coming week or two, all the rest of them will be up on my Etsy site. And I may do another YouTube video as I complete each one, so you can just simply see what the um, uh, finished embellishments all look like. Well, I thank you for watching. I appreciate it. And please come again.